Hello everyone, we are continuing with the coverage of the Tata Steel Challengers section of 2024 and we look at another game by that uh, exciting player Anton Korobov. This time he faces uh, Mustafa Yilmaz. Uh, Korobov has the white pieces and he played d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight f3 and d5 wherein the queen's gambit declined, knight c3 and to b4. It's a Rakosan. Queen a4 check, knight c6, e3, and black castles. Queen goes back to c2, and rook to e8. Bishop d2, and bishop f8. All standard theory, nothing new here. Bishop to e2, knight to b4. Queen to d1 now, and c5. d takes c5, and d takes c4. Bishop takes c4, and bishop takes c5. White castles and a6, a3 and knight c6, queen to c2 now, and bishop to d7, rook f to d1, and bishop to e7, knight to e2, rook to c8, and bishop c3, just shielding that queen, and b5, bishop to b3, and queen to c7, rook a c1, uh, rook e d8 was played here, although slightly better would be h6, just preventing any knight g5 ideas. And if after knight f4, then rook e d8 would be better. But rook e d8 anyway. Interesting move here is knight g5. We are threatening bishop into f6 and then some attack on h7. So let's say knight e5 here, blocking the bishop's path. f4, kicking the knight away, but knight c4 here. Bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and queen takes h7, so it looks dangerous, actually. Black is not lost, certainly, but it will require some precise play. And let's say bishop takes c4 here, that knight is threatening, and we isolate this pawn on c4, and knight d4. The rooks are quite central, uh, on central files, the knights are well placed. We'll have to play something like king to e7 to create some counter-attack with the rooks, but then queen h5, forcing g6, and then queen h4. This is... the white is slightly better in this line, so even, let's say, bishop a4, forcing the rook to move to, let's say, f1, and rook h8, the queen can come back. Maybe the knight comes to e4 later on, that's possible. But if the bishop were to have a capture, then we open some some uh, lines like bishop into g5 and we'll open up the f uh, the f file for ourselves. White is slightly better, but anyway, rook e d8 was played and knight f4 was played afterwards. Queen b6, knight g5 now. Again, there was no h6 played. Knight to e5 and queen to b1. Because, of course, the rook was pinning that the bishop on c3 and knight g6 here. A very interesting move, rook into d7. The correct response here is knight into d7, and knight f takes e6, bishop takes g5, and knight takes g5, so we have a bishop and a pawn for the exchange. Let's say knight d takes, uh, knight d to e5, h4, with threatening h5 to kick that uh, knight away, h6 and h5. This is possible. H takes g5 and h takes g6. Knight takes uh, g6 and queen f5. White has very active pieces and will probably gobble up the g5 pawn. And it's this is quite playable for both sides, actually. But after rook into d7, rook into d7 was played. And this is not right at all. Knight f into e6 comes right away. You could play something like queen b8 here. This is the best defense. We don't open up a king side. And the knight goes back to f4. And after knight takes f4, you can throw in bishop into f7 check. King h8, and e takes f4, and queen takes f4, and bishop e6. And white is certainly clearly better. But after knight... Uh, into e6, you have f into e6, and then after bishop into e6 and king h8, first throw a knight f7 check. Essentially, we're rerouting the knight now using uh, this tempo we have. King g8 and knight d6 check. And from g5, the knight has come to d6. King 
king to f8, bishop takes d7, rook takes c3 because it was lost anyway, rook takes c3 and bishop takes d6 and rook c6. Bishop takes h2, white as well grab a pawn and weaken the king's side and king takes h2 and queen b8 check. f4 and knight d7. And if we look at the material, black has two knights for a pawn and a rook. Material seems even. But black uh, black's king is quite loose here and that's that, that makes all the difference. So queen f5 check immediately. King to e8, defending that knight. Queen e4 check. Even stronger was actually rook e6 check, forcing king d8 and then queen f7. And black has difficulties making moves. So spawns on g7 and h7 will be lost soon. So let's say queen b7 here, but rook t6. First, we can create, we can keep that mate threat alive, and then we can gobble the pawns later on. But anyway, queen e4 was played. King to f8. Rook takes a6. Queen to d8. Rook to a8 now. Well, knight b8 saves the queen. Queen f5 check now. King to g8 and queen g5. Of course, if you capture the queen first, you'll lose the knight. So queen b6, but queen d5. And after king f8, simply queen d4 now. And we see that there really aren't any good squares for the queen to go. It was here that black resigned because if, let's say, queen c7, defending that knight, you have rook a7. And we see that there's there are threats on g7, so you'll have to play something like knight c6 a counter-attack but it's completely lost because after rook takes c7 and knight takes d4 you can simply grab the knight back and this end game is completely winning so now we saw a small inaccuracy after the exchange sacrifice we can go back to that point in fact that after rook into d7 a very interesting idea it was important to capture not with the rook but with the knight but this made all the difference and Korobov went for it and a very nice attack and a very nice victory for Anton Gorobov. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon with the next game.